All right, here's the first feature that I'd like to talk about. Take a look at this 4x4 four four matrix. Can you identify any with eigenvalues or eigenvectors? And you can. The one feature that you should notice in this matrix is this 3, which is the only non-zero number in its column. And it also happens to be in the diagonal. Do you see that? So it's in column 3, but it's also in row 3. That's important. We'll see in a moment why. So that's actually a dead giveaway, maybe even the simplest way to see an eigenvalue when a matrix presents this feature. When there is a single non-zero number in a column and it happens to be on the diagonal. In other words, it's in the same row as its column. And to see that it's an eigenvalue, you have to really see the eigenvector. And the eigenvector is something that will extract this column, really take advantage of that feature. That vector is 0, 0, 1, 0. I invite you to take the column perspective of matrix multiplication and realize that this product is a linear combination of the columns of this matrix where the coefficients come from this single vector. And of course, the only surviving column in this combination will be the third one, because it's 0 times the first column, matrix product, plus 0 times the second, plus 1 times the third, plus 0 times the fourth. So this, is, this vector can almost be thought of as a column extractor. So the answer will be 0, 0, 3, 0. And now that we have the result of this matrix multiplication, we ask ourselves the key eigenvalue question. Is the result a straight multiple of the input vector? And in this case, the answer is yes, because the result just happens to be exactly 3 times the input vector. And because there is this relationship between the output and the input, that multiple is called the eigenvalue. So one of the eigenvalues is 3, and this is the corresponding eigenvector. So very nice situation. So that's feature number one. Why is it important that this non-zero entry is on the diagonal? Well, let's consider a situation where it's not. Suppose that this 3 is not in this position, but in this position. Is it an eigenvalue? Let's take a look. Well, this is still the only vector that gives us any hope, because it's the only vector that sort of takes advantage of this column, really brings forth the special feature. But in this case, the answer will be 0, 3. And in this case, is the output a straight multiple? I call it a straight multiple. Uh, probably a misnomer. I, easier to say multiple. Is this column a multiple of the input column? Is the output vector a multiple of the input vector? And the answer is no. Because if you attempted to say that, yes, this vector is 3 times this one, well, 3 times this one is 0, 0, 3, 0, which is not the same as 0, 0, 0, 3. So in this situation, uh, 3 is not an eigenvector. In fact, you have no clue as to what some of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. So you see, you look at this messy matrix, all the numbers are large. I guess I'm talking about the one with the 3 here. But you see one feature that tells you one eigenvalue and one corresponding eigenvector. Really, a very insightful situation that occurs more frequently than you would think. Uh, what about this matrix? Here it's a similar situation, except it's in a row. It's in the same, it, the only non-zero entry in a row is on the diagonal. Does that actually tell you something about eigenvalues and eigenvectors? And the answer is yes. That's because we will learn that A and A transpose, not learn, but mention rather, have same eigenvalues, different eigenvectors, but same eigenvalues. So whenever there is a feature, same eigenvalue. So whenever there is a feature that tells you something about the columns, there's a corresponding feature about the rows, because it says tells something about the transpose, where the eigenvalue is given away, but the eigenvector you don't know. So in this situation, you know that there is an eigenvalue that equals 2, but you don't quite so easily see the corresponding eigenvector. To determine the eigenvector, you'll have to complete the tail end of the eigenvalue procedure, which is subtract 2 from the diagonal, 
and determine the null space of the resulting matrix. So still a little bit of work to be done, but you know one of the eigenvalues. All right, very nice and short, and this completes our feature number one.